Hi, you're watching a quick uh, review of the Parker VS, the lower uh, Parker model from the 50s. Um, from the outside, it looks just like the Parker 51. That same metal, shiny cap. Well, I think some Parkers actually have hammer and lines, but let's not get into that. <laughs> um, and the jewel, this one kind of looks or it reminds me of the moon. I don't know if you can see that, but um, the only difference from the outside from the Parker 51 is the breather hole, which is because it's a button filler, and the clip, which has no feathers and just this Parker diamond. Capping the pen, it um, again has the same shape as the Parker 51 until you get there and you see that it has a nip, uh, unhooded nip that is. Um, and even weirder, they made this pen with a clear, I guess it's a lucite feed, um, which in some people, uh, some people think that that might have been the reason why it was not in production very long. Personally, unless you're writing with a very dark ink, I think it looks uh, cool to see how ink moves to the feet. That is my thought. In terms of writing, I really can't say anything because it was scratchy when I started off, but it kind of looked like it had maybe been tweaked. And I went to Tyler Bell, or I sent it to him. He smoothed it out. Um, so pay for that. But uh, and it writes great now. But in terms of writing, I don't know. I mean, it's a pretty light pen. About. I'd say it's a bit lighter than the 51, probably because the 51, or my 51, has the uh, metal arrow filler, but there's no big difference there. Um, caps, the 51's cap is actually a bit lighter, I don't know exactly why, but it is. Actually, that might be because my 51 is missing a jewel, but that's just that. Um, and it is a button filler, which is kind of weird for a pen that was produced in the 50s, I think. Wait, maybe the late 40s. I can't remember. But um, because the button filler was apparently obsolete, Parker had, had ads in the... Uh, New York Times, I think, or stuff like that, and saying uh, that the mathematical is 102% more or something. And then they come out with a 51, and that's the best pen. So now they're going way back to the 20s and saying that's fine. I mean, it's kind of weird, but it's a button filler. I don't have a problem with it. Someone might because the little button is actually a bit loose. That might only be for mine, but it is. So we kind of just press the button and it fills. So uh, I think something's wrong with like the bar. I got it mixed up, but yeah, it's a standard button filler. And posted for me, I don't post the Parker 51 or a VS just because is a but it adds too much weight because some people hold their pens back here, I hold mine up there. Well, not that far, but like there. Um, and I don't have really small hands, but they just... Uh, I can't write with big pens for some reason. Um, but if you have uh, medium-sized hands, or hands, I think I have quite spidery fingers, then this is a great pen um, in terms of form. And in terms of being too flashy and stuff like that, I mean, it's really the same as Parker 51. It's, I mean, I wouldn't see a problem with carrying it around everywhere. Um, so it does leak and it gets this residue right around the nib, which is kind of, I don't know, old fashioned. Like, I wouldn't want to go somewhere and then have people seeing that I'm using a pen that's A, retro and then B, it also doesn't work. So that's just my thought. But if you find one that doesn't do that, 
and we made this pen has obviously has quite a bit of wear, so I don't really know what a new VS would be like. But if you have a VS that doesn't do that, then I see it as a great option. Uh, thanks for watching.